um, um, sorry, I forgot. Um, anyways, I'm here to actually talk about our new project. Um, it's called Border Control. Uh, you can actually read it over here. It's uh, it's a speculative project. Um, I won't give much heads up right now. I think I'll be writing some stuff about it, uh, what we were thinking, what this project about. I'm just gonna give you a very, very brief uh, thing about some of the technicalities. So this is actually, as I mentioned, it's a speculative project about, um, which actually came out of a very personal story. So I'm right now, uh, working in Shanghai. I'm actually from India and uh, I studied abroad for certain years and worked abroad as a free consultant for certain years and there had always been visa issues traveling a across different um, countries. Um, issues in the sense like all these bureaucratic policies that governs my travel and um, defines or secures my visits and trips um, for security reasons. Uh, these things are very unclear. Uh, the documentations depends on what is there on the website and depends a lot on personal decision making of the authorities behind all of those things. Um, what I mean by things are unclear is the sense that, uh, or the mere fact that we do not know the policies, a lot of policies, but it seems apparently on the surface that um, those legislations apply only to my physical body of my being because um, or any person in general is because uh, our actions are objectified and people think that we would be more harmful if we are presented a certain place in person rather than uh, being virtually um, relevant. Also another question that we would be, we are asking and actually there are a lot of questions but like for some of the major things are like um, um, does does our policy making and uh, the policy evaluations and uh, the transparency I'll talk later but this does this policy um, development is same is developing at the same pace as we are in a technological age because like still we are dependent on so much of paperwork and today we have internet and, like so many things uh, we could be virtually present anywhere uh, and we can virtually control or remotely control a lot of our things in a different place across the globe in different geographic locations. I do not need to move myself to a physical place until unless if I'm design consultant I can be in a place, be with meetings over hangouts with people and decide certain decisions and like have my work being done from my place. I don't even have to be there physically present. But my works which would actually make an impact would be naturally or virtually delivered over there through internet. So at this time does how does these policies actually apply to my virtual being or my another being or my surrogate to a different location uh, does these policies apply to that part or does this apply only to my this physical body which is made of flesh and bones um, those questions uh, are being asked and uh, to have a critique on these things and a bit of inquiry on these things um, we will be developing a set of projects and one of them is this border control it's a uh, it's a speculative government software which in future you are you will be having uh, in your um, computers uh, so what we are seeking is is this will this actually govern in future uh, those legislations those policies will also govern our troll or our um, uh, browsing over internet because right now I'm in China um, if I visit a US website, uh, do I need to actually have a US visa to do that? So it's kind of a very uh, interesting part to actually think of. Um, uh, the questions are kind of interesting, a lot of things would surface. Um, so this is one only one part of the project and the code is not complete for this project. So what? Would, so as I mentioned, like this is going to be a software that is going to be monitoring your um, sort of visits to international domains and based on uh, visa requirements currently what we have in our legislations or policies it will be making uh, or actually asking you to um, make or visit those embassy pages and like fill out visa forms and apply a separate 
entity, a separate uh, visa propaganda uh, to apply to browse an international domain from your country. Um, so the software is not complete yet, but like whatever progress I have made, I'm going to mention it, show it to you. Um, there will be a lot of bugs and we'll be fixing a lot of bugs. We'll be making a lot of additions, lots and lots of additions. So this is just the first step. This is just something what I have done this weekend. Um, Saturday and Sunday essentially and like not whole day of coding, just like evenings and after a hangover coding. <clears throat> so, so this is a Python script. Uh, it's called Border Control, a government propaganda to control your internet travels across international domains. So what it does essentially is, so all this code that I've written till now, what it does essentially is it actually grabs an active URL on your browser, whatever you have visited. So it runs in like 10 seconds. It runs, the script runs every 10 seconds. And every 10 seconds, it's check your, that URL you are in. Um, it grabs its IP address, gets the country code, and checks your IP address and checks your country code and matches it and sees and see uh, with the current legislation policies, the current visa requirements, if you need a visa actually to visit the country. Based on that, it will actually make a choice and ask you to actually visit embassy pages um, to make uh, visa requirements fulfilled um, and close the current tab. So uh, it's kind of uh, interesting. So I tried actually to make it with a Chrome app. I'm facing some trouble. So I've actually shifted to a Python script and I'm not actually just doing it with a Python script. There are two Apple scripts as well. Uh, running in the background would be running in the background as well so uh, Just to give you a look um, In this folder what we have are what is called active window which actually this script actually grabs the um, um, Current active browser tab uh, URL and then there is Twitter, which actually quits uh, the current tab. So, um, sorry, this, those are the apps, and this is the active window, and this is the creator script. But, uh, so this active window actually just goes to my default browser, or like whoever is actually having those, uh, uh, this script running on their computer. Uh, we're hoping that they'll be running Chrome, but I can actually accommodate a lot of other browsers as well, like all the browsers. So as I said, this whole thing is just a test till now. It's not complete. So like those things are taken into consideration, different browsers. It'll take that code. So I've exported it as an app, which is this one from the Apple script. And this is the quitter, which is also here. You can see this is like, it takes, so the actual, the previous script actually saves a the URL in a text file on my desktop and this text and this script actually takes that text file and um, quits or closes that link so uh, these things will also be accommodated and conveniently uh, compensated in other users profiles so this is right now hard-coded this will not be hard-coded in future um, You'll see where in the code, in the Python script, you'll see where we are actually using these two Apple scripts. Um, so here at the first place, what I'm doing here is like I'm running a continuous loop. Um, and I am doing this sub process call. So I'm actually importing uh, the sub process library, which is actually to address or access external uh, terminal commands or running any other applications from within Python scripts. So I'm running this like going to the directory to find the file here. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm going first here to get the file, like going into my desktop, uh, uh, going into the folder where my script is there and then running the active window application, which will grab the current URL active on my browser, and which will dump it in a path in the desktop here. So these are the commands like cd go to that directory, um, and then run the Apple script. Uh, after that, it will dump it in a file, and um, I'm just doing some prints here, essentially. Um, 
this is the important part first that runs and then it's gonna check uh, if the after 10 seconds which is here it'll check it will make the last URL URL to check if the current URL has changed or if the current tabs have changed if not it's not going to do anything um, if it is changed um, then it's going to run a function called domain check so what is domain check so the domain uh, execution is a function which is actually the main thing of our script till now so here uh, I'm getting the URL I'm actually cleaning the URL a little bit and then I am actually running another command which is nslookup um, which is like nslookup will give me um, kind of uh, the IP address of the URL so I'm nslookuping the IP address um, so it's stripped URL final so nslookup only takes the main URL not the other strings that is attached after the URL so that's why I'm like stripping off here uh, are the redundant instruct um, headers from the domain which I don't need uh, and like just taking for example if it's like www.github.com slash datasaurav slash something something I don't need those I just only need the www.github.com and also I don't need the HTTP or HTTPS uh, so I got rid of HTTP HTTPS headers and I got rid of uh, whatever comes after .com uh, so that file is saved as well so it's the stripped URL essentially so it's just like string manipulation I'm doing here and then um, nslookup uh, that URL will give you the IP address and here is just a very small uh, part which actually it is like simulating external commands from within Python essentially um, what am I doing next is uh, getting so this command it just doesn't throws a, for example I'll just I think I'll just show you an example rather than like speaking too much uh, so if I do ns look up um, uh, www.google.com uh, you can see it gives me an IP address here the main IP address that I'm interested in so all I need is just this IP address and not all of this information so again I'm cleaning up and I'm just using this IP address right so here I'm actually uh, cleaning up um, strip and get the so here's the comment I've written is like strip and get the single IP simple IP I'm interested in and uh, here is again I'm doing some string manipulations to get that thing um, and this is what I have at the end of um, the stripping now uh, to get the IP address you know, from the IP address the country code of that visiting website I found an online API which is called IP info uh, so visit this site and you'll get uh, so here they have like they're making some curl commands so for example this right um, if I have an IP address I put it after like curl IP info IO slash my IP address and slash whatever query I want to get it out so the queries I can get is like country city location geography everything uh, like this so um, go visit the site you'll get how this thing works so for example if I again go back to here and curl like um, IP info dot IO slash um, this IP address and uh, slash for example country I'll get US the country code where a Google server is if I don't give country and just leave back this I'll get all the informations like the country geography locations IP host everything so you can strip off whatever you need from there so now I need to run this terminal command from within Python right to get the country code um, 
so come back here I'm doing curl IP info slash uh, country um, I'm using uh, sorry we're not here we're here so IP info slash the URLs IP and the country right so this is the um, command I'm interested in and I'm actually making them into a single string as a command and assigning it to a variable command and in the sub process I'm running curl that command and I'm getting the URL of the uh, or the um, the country code and uh, I'm doing some strip manipulation here again to just to get the country code and nothing else um, now I got the country code of the visiting URL now I need to know my country code so you can got that again from IP info so if we just run carl IP info uh, I'll get my IP address so for example carl IP info dot IO uh, this is my IP address which is right now Shanghai uh, I'm right now based in Shanghai so um, and if I do IP info slash country uh, I'll get the country code of my IP address so now we got these two variables which is CN and US and then you can compare them to make our decisions right um, so here I am actually just um, doing that and um, getting my uh, and then rest I'm gonna do the tab operations and closing the browser later all that stuff a uh, few of the challenges that I saw why the code is so long is I am actually making the checks for HTTP and HTTPS like this is the stripping part so you can see like if it's HTTP do something if it's HTTPS do something if it's nothing don't do anything uh, so if it's HTTP and then if there is a dot com there then do something if there's a dot org at the end do something if there's dot edu do, do something so these are all the domain extensions that I'm taking care of in this uh, separate domain check function and under domain check I'm actually running the main domain execution uh, function um, so all these things are taken care of and then I'm finally running the domain execution function under or domain check function under here which actually runs domain execution as well so next thing from here so this is like buggy and I haven't actually here's a list of all the domain extensions that I have taken into consideration all the major countries and major domain extensions have been taken into consideration and same as HTTP and HTTPS but like there are a lot of other things missing because I don't think they're relevant for the project we're not making a complete software we're just showing a proof of concept I guess so um, uh, so this is this much how uh, it has been done uh, so let's see if uh, it works or not um, let's go to the terminal but before that let's go here so this is called um, so right now my current tab is this if I run the Python script which will also run the Apple scripts and everything um, sorry not this one let's clear it up a little bit clean it up so yeah so external command so if this is my python script this is my python script i'm gonna run this out right now let's see so border control okay so it's waiting for 10 more seconds and i'm gonna go through right now what just happened <coughs> and uh, it's taking some time because I'm on VPN and the internet is really slow here anyways we got some results and let's quit here so let's so this is just a signature of uh, <laughs> the it just gives it an edge uh, it's just me being trying to be an artist here 
So this is the unedited URL of the first, actually another uh, URL I visited first I, before IP info. Let's see what happens with the IP info. After 10 seconds, this is the first batch it run, ran. After 10 seconds, this is the first batch it ran, which is the unedited URL is this, which actually matches here. And um, so the main clean URL is this after I remove the HTTPS and the developers part from the main domain. And after running the curl command, uh, this is the IP address I'm interested in. So after all this gibberish data, um, this is what I'm interested in. This is a simplified IP. And the country code after running this is this. And uh, after running, finding my country code is this. And now we can actually compare this and this and do our stuff. Um, so to check if uh, uh, if it takes into consideration that I'm being on the same IP address for and haven't changed it, let's see, let's the code run, script run for some time. Um, so it'll be running on a 10 second cycle. Uh, so you can see like no new domains have been visited and it will do that again uh, after 10 seconds. Um, again, you can see like no new domains have been visited. It checks the URL, compares it, no new domains have been visited. So uh, up to now this part has been cons taken care of. Uh, major part, I guess, not a major part. Um, I guess a lot of work has to be done in this section, take into consideration all the domains to incorporate so the code is going to be long and useless. I guess it's funny, but like, I don't know. This is kind of necessary. And then um, the code is going to be more and more longer and kind of same and iterative in the sense that when I compare each country to other country and sends them, send them to um, the embassy's web page, so it's going to be a long, long list. So I'm trying to figure out what is the best way to do it, like very simply because I'm a very lazy, lazy person. Uh, so probably I'm going to make an array list or like scrape Wikipedia embassy lists and their web uh, links and like forward them there uh, comparing. But like at the first place, I have to compare them. So the code is going to be long. Um, so yeah, this is what I have done till now. So this is kind of a progress report and I'm going to be making these logs, video logs uh, for some time. This is easier for me to catch up and my other partners will be joining uh, this uh, few folly that we're making or whatever conspiracy you can call it or uh, naughtiness we're doing um, for them as well. It'll be understand to make this code and we'll be making and we'll, another feature plan of ours is to actually have a robot and a surrogate between different countries. And we have our colleagues in different countries. We'll be traveling next month and we'll have our surrogates controlling and we'll be allowing them to pass through airports by themselves. But there will be a face on it. So how does the airport authority react to it? Like an automated machine traveling across borders. Uh, and it's going to be essentially a documentary about that. So uh, I'm not going to be telling you much about it. I'm going to write it on, my, uh, on the uh, project's blog. So do follow that. Uh, and uh, let me know if you get stuck. So it's also there on the GitHub. Uh, probably I have to find it out, but let's see if I can open up GitHub. Um, slash uh, border control. Um, the name is pretty funny though, because, so yeah. So this is the GitHub link. You can go and fork it and check if the code runs on your browser till now and let me know if there are any issues. I'll try to make a bug fixes. Um, yeah. So um, that's it for now. See ya.